turn our attention to some of the most shameless and morally corrupt people in America. That would be the Bidens. Many in the mob, the media, they love to point out that Hunter Biden's ongoing trial is, is an example that even a Biden can face justice. But in reality, Hunter's trial is but a perfect example of the lengths your government will go to, allegedly, to protect the son of a prominent Democrat. Now, according to the very real contents of Hunter's very real laptop, the president's son engaged in a life of crime for many years. The evidence seems transparent and overwhelming, but you decide. It was on a massive scale. Remember the fallout of the 2020? 51 Intel experts signing off on a letter claiming the laptop had all the hallmarks of Russian disinformation. This after three years of lies being peddled over and over again, the Russia hoax by the media mob, all of it a lie, all of it based on a dirty dossier. The dossier becomes the basis of lying to FISA courts four separate times, three of them signed by Mr. Higher Honor himself, James Comey. In reality, the so-called experts were spreading disinformation. All they knew about the laptop was nothing. They only knew they wanted Joe Biden to win. You think they'd apologize? Don't hold your breath. Now that the laptop is official evidence at Hunter's gun trial, well, Fox News Digital reached out to the all 51 Intel experts that signed on to the letter, and most had no regrets at all whatsoever. They got what they wanted. They helped Joe Biden uh, get the election in 2020. Some even claiming that it was the patriotic thing to do, a means to an end. Anyway, of course, Joe Biden is now president. The evidence of the alleged wrongdoing on that laptop is shocking. You have rampant drug use, hundreds of thousands of dollars seemingly, I can't say for sure, spent uh, soliciting sex, purported tax evasion on millions of dollars in income that needs to be investigated, refusing to even file tax returns uh, in certain years, along with the possibility should be investigated of money laundering, the possibility of FARA violations tied to his own father. Many Americans can rightly sympathize, sure, with Hunter's addictions and personal struggles, but not the millions and millions and millions made with businesses in which he admits he had zero experience at all or the shady actions of his father's Department of Justice, which is politicized and weaponized. According to the New York Times, the DOJ prosecutor that's tasked with investigating Hunter, this guy, David Weiss. Remember, he's going to sweep the whole thing, plan A, under the rug, no charges at all, after purposely letting the statute of limitations run out on some of the most serious tax charges from the Burisma years. Plan A, well, got ruined by two brave IRS whistleblowers. On to plan B. That was the sweetheart plea deal that looped a temporary gun charge in with a few minor tax violations, no jail time. Yeah, sadly, plan B was ruined because the judge actually uh, read the plea deal and started asking real questions about the totally, completely unprecedented nature of the deal. And now we're on to plan C. Well, after years of investigating, let's make this guy the special prosecutor. Let's go into a friendly venue in Delaware in a courthouse there and hope for the best. The jury has officially begun their deliberations. You know, any outcome won't surprise me, including an outright acquittal or a hung jury. But they'll decide if Hunter is guilty on the three felony charges. Count one accuses Hunter of lying on an ATF form when purchasing a gun, swearing that he was not addicted to drugs. Count two accuses Hunter of lying to the gun dealer. Count three alleges that Hunter illegally possessed the gun while addicted to drugs or actively using drugs. The evidence seems to me overwhelming based on evidence from the trial. Uh, one day after buying the gun, Hunter texted his girlfriend. He was waiting for his dealer. The next day, Hunter texted his girlfriend. He's smoking crack. So let's be clear. These allegations are not a joke. Joe Biden, his fellow Democrats, don't they love to lecture you about gun control? In fact, President Biden is now proposing tighter regulations surrounding lawful gun ownership and steep penalties for anyone who dares to step out of line. And yet his own son is on trial for gun crimes. But if this is the only trial that Hunter faces, this will only prove that Biden's DOJ, as we have been telling you, is politicized and weaponized. The judge instructed the jury to ignore Hunter's ties to the first family. 
But let's be clear. It's because of those ties that Hunter now is only facing gun charges in the Biden-friendly venue of Delaware. He's not getting the Donald Trump treatment like Trump got in New York with a valuation uh, of Mar-a-Lago at a mere $18 million in a case that involved, well, valuations. The judge in that civil trial was more guilty of valuation fraud than anything they accused Donald Trump of. And then, of course, we have the case of Alvin Bragg. Misdemeanor statute of limitations expired, upcharged to a felony election crime, but don't even tell Trump what you're charging him with. You know, more importantly about the Bidens, why did foreign, oh, oligarchs, why did they pay Hunter Biden millions and millions of dollars, according to the Johnson Grassley Senate report? What services was he capable of providing if he was admittedly addicted to drugs at the time? Now, if he was lobbying on behalf of a foreign en entity, uh, why didn't he register with FARA? Isn't that required by law? And why did Hunter and the entire Biden family use over 20 shell corporations, according to the House Oversight Committee? Uh, were those accounts actually used to funnel foreign funds to different members of the family? Hmm. Interesting questions, right? Did the big guy financially benefit from Hunter's foreign deals in any way? According to the laptop that apparently is very real, well, the big guy had 10 percent put aside for him, and Hunter complained bitterly about giving half his income to Pops and complained about paying for Pops' home repairs. Why did the big guy lie to you, every one of you watching this show, about meeting with his son's business associates? Remember, Joe said over and over, he never one time ever spoke to his son, brother, or anybody about these foreign business deals. Devin Archer said that he recalls Joe Biden calling into at least 20 meetings with Hunter and these foreign business partners. And what about Burisma, the Ukrainian energy giant? Hunter admits no experience in oil, gas, coal, Ukraine when he goes on Good Morning America, but then gets paid millions to sit on that company's board. And then, Joe, you might recall, bragged about leveraging a billion of your dollars to get the Ukrainian prosecutor investigating this company and his son fired, brags about getting it all done within six hours. The result of that firing, Hunter continues to get paid for zero experience, never mind the Chinese energy conglomerate CEFC. We'll save that for another day. As you can see, Hunter's gun trial is really just the tip of the iceberg. Frankly, I would call it low-hanging fruit when it comes to Hunter. And just below the surface, it's not a pretty picture. Make no mistake. When a family can ostracize their own five-year-old granddaughter and ignore her existence until shamed by Maureen Dowd at the New York Times and then never even follow up to talk to her, meet with her, include her, it's pretty safe to assume the worst. But, of course, everyone, including Hunter, they were innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, right? So tonight, we continue to await the verdict out of Delaware, not exactly an unfriendly venue for a Biden. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.